Let me show you my favorite photo editor on the iPad. So first of all, as you can see, I changed my look a little bit. I kind of simplified it a little bit to make it more simple and refined. I have now one light in the background, my falconized light. I have my big old softbox in here, a table, and that's pretty much it. Really simple, really clean, just the way I like it. If you want me to make a tutorial or a video on how my setup looks at the moment, let me know down below. So now let's talk about Pixelmator Photo for the iPad. Quick disclaimer though, I am not a professional photographer or a professional photo editor. I'm just someone who edits YouTube thumbnails and sometimes Instagram photos. So if you want to have a, an in-depth information about Pixelmator Photo, I would suggest to watch another video. In my opinion, there are three good photo editors for the iPad. You have Darkroom, you have Lightroom, and you have Pixelmator Photo, which is the one that I use. Darkroom is great, it's actually pretty good. I use it on my iPhone from time to time, but unfortunately they now switched to a subscription-based payment, to a monthly payment, which I don't really like. Luckily, I got the application when it was one-time payment, so I don't have to pay monthly uh, for Darkroom. But if you're gonna get the application now, you're gonna have to pay monthly, I think it's like five or $10, something like this. The second application is Lightroom, and Lightroom is the best of the best, in my personal opinion, if you want to get the best photo editing experience, but again, it's a subscription-based payment, which I don't really like. I just don't feel pro enough to pay $5 a month uh, for a photo editor. Maybe once I become more professional with photo editing, I will buy Lightroom because it's the best of the best overall. And the last one is Pixelmator Photo. For just $5, you're pretty much getting all the professional features that Lightroom and Darkroom offers without any subscription payment. So now let's jump into my iPad Pro and I'm gonna show you exactly how Pixelmator Photo works and what you can do with it. And then you can decide whether should you buy it or not. All right, so let's launch Pixelmator Photo. And this is how it looks when you're opening up the application. You have all your settings here, library, my albums, other albums. You have your photos here that you have on your iPad. Let's select a photo that I took with my iPhone. This is a raw photo that I took with my iPhone with the application called Halide. Then you're gonna click edit to get the edit options. Here you have ML. This means that Pixelmator Photo is going to automatically uh, adjust everything for you, as you can see, without you need, needing to do anything. The next tool is the removal tool, which is really great. As you can see here, I have some stuff in the lake. So I can take the pencil, draw, and then it's gonna take it away basically. And you can remove other things in the photo if you want to. The next tool that you have is cropping tool. You can crop to any aspect ratio that you want. 16 by nine, four by five for Instagram, square, four by three, three by four. And you can also dial in a custom setting if you want to. I usually do 16 by nine for YouTube thumbnails. And then here is the editing option. If you want to manually edit everything, you can have this thing on the right side and if you slide it like this, you can also have it on the left side. On the bottom, we have filters, pre-built filters inside Pixelmator Photo, as you can see. All right, now let's take a look at what you can do and how you can adjust your photo. You have white balance settings, obviously, blue and orange, green and red, okay. Saturation, vibrance, hue that you can adjust as well. You can also click ML. I don't know exactly what it means, but basically it's going to automatically adjust the amount of saturation and vibrance needed for your photo. So let's click that. And as you can see, it did everything for me. A lightness, basically exposure, highlights, shadows. So I'm gonna bring the exposure up a little bit, reduce the highlights, Increase the shadows, and as you can see, I brighten up the photo. Then you also have brightness in here. I think I'm going to reduce the shadows a bit more. Contrast. Okay, then you have color balance, so you can change the color for the shadows, for the mid-tones, 
and also for the highlights if you want to. Then this is a setting that I use a lot, selective color. Usually I do the skies, so let's have, I want to add a little bit more saturation to the skies, brighten it up a little bit or make it more dark. Okay, you can also change the color of the sky. Basically, it's going to affect just one color in the picture. Everything that's going to be blue, it's going to affect that. All right. And you can select different colors, obviously. So I can brighten up the greens because I have some greens in here. More greens that I can brighten up, and as you can see. Every time you click on the, click and hold the photo, it's going to show you before and after, before and after. Really cool. Then you have levels. I don't really use it that much. It's basically the same as uh, curves, pretty much. Here are the curves, you can adjust contrast, and so on and so forth. This image is a little bit underexposed, to be honest. But still, I retrieved a lot of information. And you have replaced color, which is really cool. So let me show how it works. You can select a color, let's say blue, and I'm going to replace it to green. Or actually, no, I'm going to replace it to orange, okay? If you want to, you can do that. A black and white setting that you can play around with. Color monochrome, never really use that, but you have it, Sophia. You can add Sophia to your photo if you want to. Kind of a filter fade to the photo, make it a little bit, I don't know, more soft. Channel mixer you have, invert. Vignette. To be honest, the vignette tool here in this application is not that great. I don't know, I don't really like it. I prefer the vignette in a darkroom, to be honest. But you have it here. Sharpen to sharpen up your photo. Okay, and grain to add a little bit of grain if you want to your picture and whatnot. Okay, so for just $5, in my personal opinion, Pixelmator Photo is hands down the best photo editing application on the iPad. If you want the best of the best of the best and don't mind paying a subscription payment, then uh, consider getting the Lightroom application, which I might get soon. I don't know. Maybe I will get it once I'll get more into photography. We'll see about that. But overall, Pixelmator Photo is awesome. You get a lot of features. It's very simple to use. It's intuitive. It's working really great. And they're constantly updating the program, the application with better features and more things that you can do with your photographs. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.